Hey, you're happy that's going great. In this video, you are going to learn how to implement your own GraphQL schema with Python and Django using the Graphene package. In the first section, you will implement one from scratch with Python and Graphene. Then we will be adding the Graphene Django package on top of that and see how to implement a schema specifically in Django. Let's get started. First of all, we want to make sure to install the Graphene package. pip install Graphene. Make sure to now create a new Python file, I've named mine schema.py. And we want to start out by importing Graphene. Now we're going to create our first query, modeling a simple user. Let's create a class called query. That subclass is from graphene.object type. And for now, the only field available will be a simple boolean. And it's going to be called is staff. And that's going to be a graphene. Dot boolean. Now let's create a new schema and set it equal to graphene dot schema. And this takes in the query we just created. So let's say it's query equal to the query. And there's a function we can run called execute on the schema directly. And we're going to store the result in a variable called result. So we're going to set it equal to schema dot execute. Okay, now we can pass in a string, which is the query we want to run against our GraphQL endpoint. And for this, to make it a bit easier to understand, we're going to use triple quotes. And then leave some space and three quotes again. Like we've covered in the first episode, we're going to start this off with an opening and a closing curly bracket. And in here we're going to use is underscore staff. Okay, let's see what we get. So for now, let's just print the results.data.items. Data is an attribute we can call on the result. And now we can run schema.py. Okay, non-type object has no attribute items, which is an indication that there's some sort of error. In this case, it's because the query doesn't know how it should resolve our is staff field. And to tell it how it should resolve it, we can create a function called resolve underscore is underscore staff. Basically just the name of our field and then prepending a resolve underscore. And this one takes in the self and info. And for simplicity, we are just going to return true. Okay, let's now try it out. There still seems to be some sort of error. And the problem is that when writing a query, it expects a camel case naming convention because most times we're going to do it from a language like JavaScript, which of course uses camel case instead of snake case. And the staff in camel case would be like this, just with an upcase s and by removing the underscore. And as you can see, we get back some sort of odict items with the element of staff set to true, which is of course what we set. And just for making this look a bit nicer, let's set items equal to a dict of result.data.items. And then we go to the top and import JSON. Because if we just print out items, you see that it still doesn't give us the best representation because there's not a lot of space. So what we can do instead is use json.dumps and then we can dump our items with an indent of 4. And this already looks much better. And one more comment regarding camel case, if you wanted to keep it snake case, there are two options. You can either go in here and when declaring your schema, set auto underscore camel case to false. And then we still get back what we wanted. Or we can get rid of it here. And instead set the name equal to is underscore staff for this particular field. And then it also works. So these are two ways you can omit it if you don't want it for whatever reason. Next up, let's create an actual user class. Again, the subclass is from graphene dot object type. And we're going to give it a couple of fields, one of which is ID. And this is going to be a graphene dot ID field. Let's also set a username equal to a graphene dot string. And then we can also store a last underscore login as a date field. Or actually you could make this date time. There are also other types you can use for your fields, but I'm going to leave it at these three for now. 
In a query, we now want to be able to resolve a list of users. So we are first of all going to set users equal to graphene dot list of user. And then let's change this function to resolve users. And as we have declared up here, this is going to return a list of users. So let's just create a couple of users and return them. Okay, let's now see what happens if we type in users. And in this case, nothing happens because we haven't declared which fields we want from our users. So let's again use opening and closing curly brackets and say username. And we also want the last login. And of course, make sure this is camel case. As you can see, we get all of our three users back. And if you remember from the last episode, we actually passed in an argument to declare how many we want. So we can do the exact same thing as well by just going in here and in the graphene.list, let's set another argument called first. And this is going to be a graphene.int. And again, like in the last episode, if we pass two to this, we only get the first two users. Likewise, if we only pass one, we only get the first one. And now we also need to take it in in the resolve function. So first, and then we can use some basic slicing syntax to only get the first, first ones, however we passed. So we'll use a colon and then first. If we now run it, we get null because there's a positional argument missing, just like it tells us. And to resolve it, we are just going to pass first as two. And we only get two. Likewise, as I said, if we only pass one, we get the first one. Next up, let's cover how to use mutations. In a schema declaration, we have to go down and set mutations equal to mutations. So I create a class called mutations, which subclass is from graphene dot object type just like the query. And in here we're going to have all of our mutations and the only one we're going to create is create underscore user. And we are going to set this to a create user dot field. And this is going to be the class that's actually going to subclass from graphene.mutation. So right above that, create a class called create user that subclass from graphene dot mutation. And in here we can have an inner argument class. And as the name says, we can take all of the arguments we need in our mutation to create our user. So let's set username to graphene.string. Let's go up and set our last login required to false because we don't want to assign it as soon as we've created a user. And the field required for our mutation is going to be the user. And it's going to be a graphene.field that points to our user, to this one. And now we can create a function, which is called mutate, that takes in self, info, and our arguments, which in this case is only username. And we can set the user equal to a new user with the username that's been passed. And then we can return a create user, where we set the user to the user we've just created. And in the documentation, they also have an OK field. So that's something you could include as well if you want to. Now let's go down and get rid of this and create a mutation. We're going to name this create user. In here, we can write our mutation, which is create user. And this actually calls this field right here. And this is only the name of our mutation. So you can change that to whatever you want. But this one has to be named create user because this field is also then use opening and closing curly brackets and set username to Bob. And by the way, make sure to use double quotes. And now with the username at our disposal, let's just say user and then pass in the username. Oh, and this shouldn't be mutations, by the way, it should only be mutation. And as you can see, we've created a new user in our mutation. 
and at the same time receive back what we've created, which is a nice benefit. And last, I want to cover how we can use variables, although you would normally use them from JavaScript or something like that, and say variable values, which is a dictionary. And then let's set username to Bob in here. And instead of hard coding the value, we're just going to set username to dollar username. And like we've covered in the first part, we now need to declare the username. So set dollar username to a string type and hit run and you still see Bob. But now we can play around with the value down here. So if we set this to Alice, we get Alice without needing to go in and change our mutation. And there's actually another concept called context, which I want to show you real quick. So let's say for every user that is a VIP, we want the username to be all uppercase. Let's pass the context of is underscore VIP as true. In a mutate function, we can use the info argument we've been passing in the entire time now. So it does have a purpose. So let's say if info.context.get is VIP. Then let's set the username to username.upper. And it should actually work already. And you can see that the username is now in all uppercase. Let's change this to false. And it's normal again. Awesome, that's working. Next up, let's install Graphene Django and actually build a small API into a Django project. pip install graphene-django and right under the snippet application, let's include graphene underscore Django. And the way we are going to approach the overall design is that in every application, we are going to have a schema.py. In our main folder, we are then going to create another schema.py that has one query, which wraps all of the other queries. And in our main URL.py, we are then going to include the GraphQL endpoint, because as we've said many times now, it only has one endpoint. So let's go to our snippets app and add a new file called schema.py. And first of all, import graphene. Then also from the graphene underscore Django dot types, we want to import the Django object type. And from dot models import snippet, which is this simple snippet model. Now let's define our class query. That's us from graphene dot object type, just like we've done before. And we want to have one way to resolve all of the snippets for now, that's the easiest. So let's say all underscore snippets and set this to a graphene dot list. And now the Django object type comes into play because we can simply include the snippet here, that wouldn't work. Let's call this snippet type. And then right above, let's create a class called snippet type. That subclass is from Django object type. And similar to model forms, we can now include a class meta and set the model equal to snippet. Then again, we can create a resolve function just like we've done before. Resolve all snippets with self, info and keyword arguments. And in here, as we've set all snippets, we are just going to return snippet.objects.all. Let's now go to our sample app, which is our main folder for this project and create a new file called schema.py. In here we can first of all import graphene. And then we also need to import what we've just created, basically the query from the schema.py in our snippets app. From snippets.schema import query. And I'm just going to name this snippets query, whatever. And then we can create a class query. That subclass is from snippets underscore query. Again, what we've just imported. And in here, because we've set all of the details in our snippets query already, we can just pass. And finally, we want to create our schema and set this to graphene.schema and the query as our basically parent query. And create our GraphQL endpoint. So path graphql and then slash 
And Graphene Django has a built-in view which we can use, so let's import it from Graphene Django dot views import GraphQL view. And this is by the way a class-based view. So GraphQL view dot S view. And then we need to set our schema to the schema we've just created. And from dot schema, so from this file, import the schema. In the first part we used a playground called graph IQL. And if we wish to use that, we can set graph IQL to true. And now let's head over to our local host. And by the way, make sure to include a comma at the end, otherwise we'll get an error. And also manage the pi run server. In our local host 8000 slash GraphQL, we can now see the graph IQL playground. And let's just zoom in a bit. And we can query for all snippets, as you can see. Let's just select ID and we get our ID. Awesome. If we go back and look at the fields, we also have title, body and created. So let's try out title and body and created. As you can see, it all works. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope that this demonstration gave you a good starting point for diving deeper into GraphQL with Django. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked it and make sure to leave a like, take care and cheers.